Britain's nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarines had in a state of constant alert. Submarines submarine is a key to the first line of defence of the United Kingdom. Threat submarine in the area. Part submerged spy. One contact vi visual. It's about making sure that harm doesn't reach our shores. Part deadly weapon. This is a ship of war. It is designed to inflict damage on other people. Stand by to land engagement. That is the whole purpose of the submarine, is to, uh, to deliver violence to the enemy. Fire! Historically, it's been a closed world. We're the silent service. We don't generally talk about ourselves. Flash on a course of 091. But for the first time ever, this series has full access to a British submarine on patrol as we follow HMS Turbulent on her final deployment. It's the story of 130 men in an isolated, cramped and close-knit world, <laughs> thousands of miles from home and family. So I just thought I'd phone you up and tell you how much I love you. On a mission where discipline is paramount. You can get the odd fight. In three months, you've been in front of me twice, which I think is unacceptable. Teamwork is crucial. We're a brotherhood that drive this submarine. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Middle of the ocean, British submarine, British helicopter, doing their jobs. And danger is ever present. You're not sure when anything's going to go wrong, because obviously we've got a nuclear reactor, so everything has to be done in a safe procedure. You'll have seen the news. Um, with regards to Libya. Unknown vessel, this is surface submarine. You are approaching me in a threatening manner. As they sail through the Mediterranean and into the troubled waters of the Middle East. In this episode, preparing for the pirates. RPG! Pointed at the submarine! A bad day for Buster. Dirty jobs and the men who do them. I'm going to wash my hands now because that's come out of someone's arse. And going into action. We ought to go to two hours notice to fire as soon as we arrive in the theatre. HMS Turbulent. Half a billion pounds worth of nuclear-powered submarine is at home in Devonport, the largest naval base in Western Europe. After nearly 30 years active service, Turbs is facing her last mission before being scrapped. These final hours of preparation are the most vital of any mission, the crew's last chance to get the boat stocked and in shape for the journey ahead. After they leave Plymouth, their route will take them through the Mediterranean and beyond the Suez Canal to join the international effort to combat piracy in the Indian Ocean. It's going to be a long and arduous mission. I was always told that you would not go to sea for any more than four months at a time. So when they said eight months, I was quite shocked. For many of the men, it will be the longest time they have spent away from their families. It can never not be traumatic, leaving uh, your loved ones, um, your siblings. It does put a lot of stress on your family life. I'll kiss my son and daughter goodnight, put them to bed, come to work, and then I'm not going to see them again for 284 days. Some of them are taking it particularly hard. I'm recently engaged, and she is very supportive and, and tries to be, but it's a, it's a, it's a big ask. I've got a little 10-month-old uh, son at home. I think I'm going to miss him a lot. Um, definitely. They'll spend the coming months crammed together in a tiny space. The submarine is 84 metres long. Uh, there's 130 of us in a, uh, in a steel tube. And you've got to be quite mentally strong, I suppose, to, uh, to do it. And they are relying on a boat coming to the end of its working life. Imagine if you were to take a 30-year-old car to Singapore, drive it to Singapore, enter the Singapore Grand Prix and then drive it back. That's kind of an analogy of what we're trying to achieve. Submarines are more mechanically complex than the space shuttle. Per cubic inch, they have more signs packed into them than any other warship. As a hunter-killer designed to pursue and attack enemy shipping and bomb onshore targets, Turbulent carries a ferocious armory that includes Tomahawk missiles. 
when it's gone, it's gone. It's going to hit the target with pinpoint accuracy. And as I said, that, that target could be over 500 miles from the submarine. 37-year-old Welshman Lieutenant Commander Gareth Jenkins is the boat's second in command. As well as Tomahawk, Turbulent also carries the extraordinarily powerful Spearfish torpedo. If you're firing against a surface ship, it's designed to find out where the ship is and it'll detonate a number of meters below the hull, create a massive air bubble which will lift the ship out of the water, break its back, and then it'll sink. Come on, lads, no slacking. Three tons of food must be crammed on board. Enough to last 130 men 100 days without surfacing. Uh, I've heard of terrible stories of logistics officers not ordering enough tea bags uh, on submarines and then tea bags having to be reused and dried out. So it's a British submarine. If we don't have tea, then, then it's not going anywhere. And every last inch of the boat must be checked for noise reduction. It's the sort of thing we're after. It's just paint which is rusted off in big pieces, but it's enough to make a row. Stealth is key to the mission's success, and at sea, there will be no second chances. Turbulence captain is 42-year-old Commander Ryan Ramsey. He joined the submarine service in 1991 and has passed one of the world's toughest selection processes to take command of this vessel. It is an enormous responsibility being um, the captain of a nuclear submarine. But my biggest responsibility is to my crew to make sure that we get to where we're going uh, and we do it safely. What makes a good submariner? Um, I, I think the, the, the biggest one, uh, the biggest point is sense of humour. Uh, I, I think it's vital. No, it won't. You have to get, be able to get on with people. And also um, the drive to ensure that you're there to support your, your friend, your shipmate, and that you're never going to let them down. I think those are the two key things that make a good submariner. Before Turbulent sets off, two young crew members are initiated into the Submariner fraternity. Right men, our two newest recruits to the Brotherhood. They've proven to us as a group that they're safe to stay on board HMS Turbulent and serve it on her at peace and war. And now they're going to do the final test, which is to join the Brotherhood properly. Traditionally, the Submariner's insignia, the Dolphins, are placed in a large glass of rum. At no point should you swallow your Dolphins. It's very, very bad for you, in okay, case so of catch them in your teeth. Right, so first one, Petley. With just a day left before they start the first phase of the deployment, there's still much to do before the boat can put to sea. As executive officer, Gareth is the boat's enforcer. He runs final checks to make sure the crew is working in harmony. Imagine we're at sea with 100, 130 men, some of whom may not have been to sea before, so the men first have to prove that they know how to operate the submarine safely. Anything from something as simple as putting a positional fix on a chart to uh, firing a missile to uh, looking after the nuclear reactor. We're all but links in a chain. If we take any one man out of the chain, then the chain breaks and we can't function. They've got one chance to get it right. It's breaking down there. Usual suspects. Once we get to see we are entirely self-sufficient, we'll have enough food on board, material spares, to stay at sea for over 100 days, should we need to. It's the day of departure. Vital preparations are completed. A last cigarette, a final call home, a team photo. Say, key looking this way, nice big smiles. And Turbulent is on her way.
good to be going now. Um, we made loads of preparations and um, ready to go, and out we go. It's good news. The men of HMS Turbulent are off to face the first real test of their mission. HMS Turbulent is on her last mission. Her crew's first task is to prove their operational capacity to members of the elite naval training team, Flag Officer Sea Training, a.k.a. FOSS. They are here to put the crew through their paces. The mission can't continue until Turbs has passed their series of stringent tests made a name for ourselves and reputation is always hard won and easily lost. Um, for me failure is not an option, I'll drive this through to conclusion uh, and make sure we pass, but there is a risk. Submarines are built to work underwater. They are at their most vulnerable when on the surface. This mission is going to be particularly trying for Turbulent as there are several choke points where they are forced to surface. The Strait of Gibraltar, which takes him into the Mediterranean, and the Suez Canal and Babel Mendeb, two areas with a high risk of pirate and terrorist attack, will have to be negotiated. General purpose machine guns are the main deterrent to an attack. The crew do this drill using live ammunition. We're limited to uh, two GPMGs and we have to practice every month to make sure the guys remain in date and familiar with the weapon. So that's why we do that today on the high seas. The next part of the exercise involves other crew members, so the ammunition is dispensed with. A Royal Navy rib simulates the sort of pirate or terrorist attack Turbs might face. The Faust inspectors will be looking to see how well the crew deals with such an attack while they are surfaced. Speed of approximately 20 knots, two personnel, no weapons. Now 20 starboard, drawing right, range 500 yards. Pinsy is drawing right, sir. RPG! He's got an RPG visual, he's pointed at the submarine. Bridge, Edson, take the target, take the target. This is RPG pointed at the boat. All right, what are you going to do, guys? At first, the gun crew appear to have the attackers covered, but then the would-be pirates spring a nasty surprise. On the stern, 50 yards. By attacking Turbs from the stern, its weakest point, they have exposed a vulnerability. And it's not in your weapon arcs, you need to let him know. You two talk to one another. Oh man, uh, uh, my weapon arcs. The machine gun arcs have a blind spot. GPMG is doing nothing. The gunners are advised to switch to lighter dismounted weapons. Both personnel seen dead, sir. Headshots. The bad guys have been dealt with, but the Forst inspector still feels there's a problem. I think, in summary, sir, that what, what has been highlighted is, is your vulnerability, you know, your limitations up there. <coughs> if the threats from the stern or head on, um, you just haven't got the arcs. OK, thanks very much, and thanks for the training. And we've got to get this right, because actually this is one of our key vulnerabilities when we're on the We're not designed to be on the surface, we're designed to be underwater. Um, and actually they've highlighted some issues that we need to start mitigating now. OK, thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. In the midst of all this, the everyday life of the boat goes on. The EXO and Coxon's rounds are designed to ensure that standards don't slip. As the executive officer, I'm in charge of maintenance of the boat internally and externally, and the Coxon being the disciplinarian is the man to make sure the boys are doing the job that's required of them. We're living in a, con in a uh, confined environment and we need to make sure the boats get clean so the atmosphere is uh, clean and healthy for us to breathe. And also, with a lot of sensitive equipment on board, you need to make sure that dust and dirt is kept under control. So nothing's been done in here? We scrub, minging. No, it's pretty minging in there. I know three people that would like to move into this bunk space if uh, the standard can't be maintained. Okay, so I'll leave you in the bomb shop. 
or the funk space. Excellent. Your choice. <coughs> I know I'd rather sleep. Cheers, sir. Easy Jardine. Why, sir? You have some red daily orders today, have you? Uh, I have to be clean shaven, that includes you. I have red daily orders, sir, but right. clearly I haven't got to that part, sir. I shall, uh, gotcha. I shall uh, have a shave as soon as possible, sir. Yeah, shave and report to me in uh, 15 minutes. 15 Time minutes, sir. I'll see you in 10, sir. We have this thing called daily orders, which is basically, you have to, every, everyone reads it every day. Obviously, of course, I've read it already. But uh, it has rig of the day, what we're doing, what the plans are. But uh, it also says to be clean shaven every morning. And um, I clearly didn't get to that bit yet. And uh, as you can tell, I've just been picked up by the executive officer and he wants me to go and report to him in 15 minutes. So I think in 10 minutes, I shall uh, go groveling with an apology whilst being clean shaven. Close enough for government work. <laughs> With over five years on the boat, marine engineer Dan Gardine knows HMS Turbulent like his own home, if not better. He is a forward wrecker, working on the heavy machinery systems at the front of the boat. Easy, uh, Gardine, that's better. Sure. Hold on. Thank you very much, sir. When it comes to discipline, however, there are much more serious matters than facial hair. In a system where a weak link can cause the chain to break, everyone must play their part. Anyone not doing so is a potential problem for the whole submarine, and infractions must be dealt with. As the boat's coxswain, Paddy Parsons acts as onboard policeman. He now has to deal with the case of Andrew Buster Brown, who was 14 and a half hours late back from leave before the boat deployed. A man of many careers, including a spell as a fish farmer, Buster's been in the Navy for just under two years. He hasn't got his dolphin jet, and he's a new boy on turbs. Okay, so why were you absent for that period of time on board? Uh, I was meant to be getting a lift on the Sunday night, but I slept through. I was on the dole, it was really hard to get a job, and I thought my life needed a bit more of a, a different direction, something a little bit structured, something I've never really had before. I've, so I decided to join up. Well, money is a big part of it, but it's a different thing. How many people do you know who could say that they've, they've been a submariner or they've been on a submarine? And well, it's not many people I knew before I did this job. I'd fight anybody, and it's it's good. I enjoy it. Did you understand that you were required back on board on that morning? Yes, at I around. Did. Yes, I did. Is that on me to go then? Yeah, yeah I'm sure you can go for the afternoon. Thank you. Obviously. I came in late. I should have been in. I probably could have got in earlier. I couldn't have got in on time, but I could have got in earlier. So I'm definitely going to have to be going around. So we'll see what happens. Buster will now face a captain's table, a disciplinary hearing where his punishment will be decided. The final phase of turbulence proving period is to show they are war ready in an all-out exercise involving the military might of NATO's combined forces in the area. We're in the middle of the uh, Thursday Day War, as it's known. Um, lots of surface ships, aircraft, helicopters uh, all over the place uh, are now in the process of getting ready to engage one of the heavies. Ranges 11,000 yards. Should they be called into action, they could be tasked with launching a spearfish torpedo against enemy shipping. Standby spearfish attack. Standby spearfish attack against Although this is a simulated exercise, getting it right is crucial, for the time could soon come when it's for real. OK, hold the ports. Stand by the fire, Master Zero Two. Stand by the fire, Master Zero Two. Weapon system ready. Right. Fire! Weapon three is holding. Oh, Loud explosion audible. It's a hit and the captain's happy. For the uh, submarines, it's great. We can just go around shooting things and, um, and uh, building up our skills, dealing with capable opposition, but generally, uh, from our perspective, winning. Through three days of inspections and two weeks of intensive exercises, the crew has given it their all. Now they must await Faust's verdict. Men, this is the captain, pay attention. Finally, the captain has news. Well done on your hard work, um, but we've still got some work to do. 
There's some bad guys out there as well, and we need to be able to deal with anything that they put in our direction. So you need to keep the focus right the way through this, and then do what we have to do for the United Kingdom. That is all. Turbulent has passed, and now they can get underway to join the anti-piracy campaign east of Suez. The day has arrived for Buster's captain's table, his disciplinary hearing for being late back from leave. As well as any immediate punishment he faces, there's the stain on his record, which could affect his hopes of staying in the Navy. Abel Simon Brown. Sir. Abel Simon Brown, off, cap. As your commanding officer, I'll be hearing the charges against you. Are you Abel Seaman Andrew Brown, 30117665? Yes, sir. You are charged as follows. Cops and read the charge. Sir, Abel Seaman Warfare Specialist, Tactical Systems Submarines, Andrew Brown, of Her Majesty's Ship Turbulent, did absent himself without leave, namely 14 hours and 55 minutes. Do you admit or deny the charge? Okay, sir. Do you or your assisting officer on your behalf wish to make a plea in mitigation? Wish to make a plea in mitigation, sir. Chops. Sir, it's fair to say that Brown has not gone off to the best of starts during his short time he's been on board HMS Turbulent. He would like to take this opportunity to express his regret in his course of action which brings him to your table as a defaulter. He realises there is no real excuse for his absence, but he has been under a great deal of pressure in his person, personal circumstances with his girlfriend. Finally, Brian wishes to apologise to you for all the inconvenience he's caused. Thank you, Chops. I find the charge proved. I believe that you've shown true remorse for what you've done. But you should realise that this is a disciplinary measure and it will be recorded in your documents. Furthermore, as an administrative measure, I'm going to place you on a level three warning for discharge shore. This will be reviewed in three months, by which point you must have made improvement, otherwise you will be released from the Royal Navy. Do you understand? Yes, sir. This hearing is now concluded. Abel Seaman Brown on cap. Right turn, quick march, right wheel. Left wheel. Can just carry on, sir? Yes, please. I'm, I'm planning on getting my task put done, keeping my head down, keeping out of trouble. And uh, yeah, just getting on with the journey. It's going to be a long one. I want to make it as easy as I can, you know. I don't, I don't want to. Uh, I just want to make it as easy as I can, basically. Turbulent is on course for its mission in the Indian Ocean to help fight the scourge of piracy. But then news comes through that will change everything. You'll have seen the news um, with regards to Libya. It's becoming increasingly unsettled and we need to be prepared to do everything to give people time to think and also to enable stability in the region. And that involves every warfare discipline. Turbulent is being diverted to help support the UN mission in Libya, over a thousand miles away. The pressure is on to get there as fast as possible as events escalate in the North African country. All group is a daily meeting of the boat's heads of department. Uh, Libyan Air Force has been assessed as no longer a fighting force following the sustained airstrikes uh, that took place last week. Um, but fierce fighting is still uh, uh, raging between ground units and cities peripheral to um, the rebel stronghold of Benghazi. Uh, I think that the Middle Eastern popular unrest is going to be a feature of the next uh, number of months. OK, um, thanks. We've spent over eight months preparing for this, all in all. Everything we've done is, is prepared for this deployment to get on and do what we have to do and the focus shift has to change now so the men are motivated I get that feeling when I wander around now we need to channel that accordingly um, and there's two busy operational theatres we're now going to go to you've, you've heard the political update you've seen the news yourselves you know how busy it is in both the theatres that we're going to operate in we just uh, sailed as if we were going on a normal, normal deployment and then uh you hear a reply from the captain saying, what, what's going on? And that kind of go, you go, well, it's kind of real now. HMS Turbulent has been urgently rerouted to join the UN mission off the coast of Libya. She must get there as soon as possible 
and as a submarine, she's fastest when submerged. Diving the boat is a major part of the submariner's art, and control is the key. It's a highly complex maneuver involving over 225 individual and operational checks. XO. XO dive submarine. XO Gareth Jenkins is in charge of the dive. It's a vent, very good. Open. One and two main vents. Open one and two main vents. Vents are open to let water rush in and air rush out, allowing the submarine to submerge. One minute, XO. The captain monitors whether the dive is going to time. As the water pressure on turbs increases, checks are made for leaks. Once underwater, the nuclear-powered submarine is completely self-sufficient. The only limit on its endurance, its ability to stay submerged, is its stocks of food. Four up. Scanning reports. Turbulent is back in her natural environment. Underwater, life continues as normal for the crew. As a hunter-killer, she's a war machine, but she's also home to 130 men. <laughs> I love it. I don't, know, I don't know what drew me to submarines. I've always imagined what it was like as a kid to be on a submarine. When I initially went through my basic training, I thought, what the bloody hell am I doing? You know, this small tin can, what do I want to do this for? But on the flip side of the coin, it's a job that you can take pride in. It's not something everyone gets to do. It's a bit of a dangerous job. You pay good money, and it's a good adventure. Every day's an adventure, and no day is exactly the same as the one before. Every submariner has several jobs on board the boat. Dan Gardines are among the least glamorous. Nobody likes washing somebody else's dirty nippers and socks, so uh, we get a little bit of a bit of money out of it, you know, to, for doing it, which is not too bad really, because it can be a bit monotonous and it can be a bit drawling, especially when the washing's up to here, waist height, and you've got to plow your way through it. If we're on patrol, or we're going in a quiet state, then we have a tendency to try not to wash unless it's important, like chef wipes, overalls, and uh, tea towels, things for hygiene. Even domestic chores like this can have an impact on the boat's operation. Sound can travel hundreds of nautical miles through the water, and the washing machines on board have to be exceptionally quiet to avoid detection. We've got some very intelligent washing machines and tumble dryers, so we can actually uh, put them on an extremely quiet wash so that the enemy can't detect us and can't detect the vibrations through the washing machines. If variety is the spice of life, then being an engineer on a submarine answers all Dan's needs. I'm a jack of all trades, really, a bit of a handyman. Some of the good things about my jobs are you get qualified working with hydraulics, you work with multi-million pound systems and you're actually trusted to repair them. One of the bad things about my job is also I work with a sewage system as well, so if someone's blocked a shit house, it's my job to fix it. You imagine 120 beer drinking, curry eating submariners all on the same submarine with only five toilets. It happens quite frequently. What's going on with the heads? Broken macerator. What, just on that one? Yeah, yeah. You were declogging, is that what they mean? You're just doing that? I'm blocking this one. This so we haven't got blocked uh, pipes? No. Okay, no. the rest are all working. All right. This is what blocks it out. All right, it's come from someone's arse, but it's actually calcium. The water that we drink on board strips the calcium from your bones and your body. And that little piece there is basically like concrete, and that's what happens to the pipes. It lines it up, and the little macerators, when they turn, they can't chew it up, so they burn out kind of what's happened in here and just block up. But I'm going to wash my hands now because that's come out of someone's ass. Good man. Shouldn't be long. I'll be back to With space at a premium, keeping fit on the boat is not easy, even though Navy rules demand it. Well, I think it's really important that um, if you're going to keep your mind alert, you need to keep physically active as well. You take into account 
um, have a little space for us to walk around. It's pretty, you sat down a lot for most of the job. Um, actually, this is exceptionally important just to make sure you burn off enough calories and you're alert right the way through. And we're going to need that where we're just about to go into that. We're going to need our wits about us. Inevitably, with this many men on a boat, competition is massive. There is a competition in the wardroom generally between uh, the XO Gareth, uh, the MEO Ben, and uh, the pilot uh, Gareth Griffiths. Um, they're about a minute ahead of me. With uh, I'm, I'm a minute behind them with times, but there's room for the old man to uh, come in from the outside, I reckon. See, the, uh, the MEO's achieved uh, 707, so just to give him a bit more focus, we'll give that 705. As Turp steams towards Libya, the crew knows another British submarine has already seen action in the area. The lads are obviously aware that our sister submarine Triumph has fired uh, Tomahawk missiles uh, against targets in Libya, and they're aware that there's a uh, potential possibility that we, we may be called upon to do the same. Uh, our job at the moment is to remain ready for our primary tasking, which is to go east, whilst tempering that with the fact that, yes, we may be called upon to strike, and be ready to do so when called forward. 19 people trapped for a 29 bull catch. Because we're a weapon for our pistol masters, actually, um, we're, we're there to uh, help them um, achieve whatever aim it is. So actually, we might get there and do nothing because there's no need to do anything at the time. But we need to be ready for the moment critique when they decide that military force is the, um, is the, is the thing they want to use. Until it needs to be used for its primary purpose, the bomb shop doubles up in a number of ways. Today, it's a dental surgery. Members of the crew are trained as onboard medics, able to deal with everything from a toothache to a heart attack. This sort of self-sufficiency means the boat's operations are interrupted for only the most serious emergencies. There we go. Are you comfy where you are, Buster? Uh -huh. Good stuff. Just let me know and I'll get you some more cotton. All right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's all you can say when you've got forceps here. It'll be the kit in your mouth anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go for my first, I'm gonna take that out. Okay. That has to be one of the better ones I've done. Okay, so for us. Good afternoon, turbulence. TSA from the control room in the short world at 1300. Submarine is currently 180 miles north of Cap Finisterre in Spain, with 888 miles to run into the Strait of Gibraltar. Weather up top is fine and the sea state is low. 19-year-old able seaman Edward Timpson, a.k.a. Timo, has only been on the boat seven months, but he's born to the job. Well, all my family's in the Navy. I'm a dad, my granddad, my uncle, my cousin, my brother. Well, they're all quite a naval family, really. At sea, I'm looking after forward staff, which is fresh water and ventilation, and looking after the periscopes as well as fridges. So I'm looking after the bomb shop, making sure all the weapons are fine. That's my main responsibilities. We're going to be uh, measuring for auto fuel, fuel that powers the spearfish torpedo. I'm a really young lad, and I've got a lot of responsibility. That's good. No reading. So we fill in our log, saying there's been no reading. This is done every six hours. Timo takes the hardships of life as the tallest man on board in his stride. I'm six foot five, but walk, walking about, because I'm quite aware of my height, I find I hit my head a lot less than people who are shorter than me, because they think, well, I'm short, so I can, I can get under that. Whereas I think, I know I'm too tall for that, so I'm going to duck well beneath it. People who are shorter than me hit their head a lot more. A lot more than you see people with cuts all over their head. We call it hatch rash. Well. Although he's come in at the lowest level, Timo has ambitions of becoming an officer. One of his most important jobs is in the heart of the control room. As periscope assistant, he looks after the needs of the men who are the eyes of the boat. He's looking out there all the time, so anything else that he needs to do should be done by somebody else. So he shouldn't have to think of anything except looking out there and keeping the submarine safe. It's also his duty to make sure those on the periscope don't work over their allotted time. Range, on top. If they're down there too long, strain their eyes. And that's obviously bad, bad for them in the long run. But uh, a fresh set of eyes can also see different contacts. Uh, in the day, we let them on there for 20 minutes, but at night, only 15. 
maximum. 10 minutes done on search. There's no, uh, no alternative to a, uh, somebody looking out and actually seeing. For long periods, the men on periscope are the only ones to see above the surface. Under the sea, night and day can roll into one for the men on turbulent. They work in shifts, a constant and exhausting six hours on, six hours off. At any point, half the crew could be asleep. With only 98 bunks for 130 crew members, some of them must share. 42 people are hot bunking. That means that uh, as, they get, as one man gets out of bed, another man who's just come off watch gets into the same bed. So something like E.T. Timpson, you hot bunk, don't you? Yes, sir. Who do you hot bunk with? Uh, E.T. Two. There you go. So E.T. Timpson shares a rack with E.T. Two, and they'll be in opposite watches. E.T. Timpson's in second watch, so when he goes to off watch at 1900 this evening, uh, he'll get into the bed that is currently occupied by his shipmate E.T. Tune. Bez. Bez. You are. Well. <laughs> Nobody's ever happy to be woken up, but uh, you've got to get them up on time, otherwise uh, they'll miss their lunch. That means that I don't get to get, get into bed. The quicker they, quicker they get up, the uh, quicker I can get into bed. So it's in my interest to do it on time. This is what we call hotel living accommodation. You have about, I have about 14 inches between me and the metal deckhead, which suits me down to the ground. Submariners, when they're in training, when they first join a boat, have a tendency to get coughing dreams, which is where you're sort of se either semi-conscious or still asleep, but because you, you can't move anywhere, you can't roll over, you, you have a tendency to think that you're in a coffin or you're locked in a box, and uh, a lot of guys have nightmares when they first join up, worrying that uh, they can't get out and uh, things are caving in on them. I used to have them, or I've had them a couple of times, but uh, not so much anymore, so I think it just comes, you just get used to it. Turbulent is about to enter the Mediterranean on her way to Libya. To do so, she must transit the Strait of Gibraltar, one of the choke points on the mission. She must navigate it on the surface, a vulnerable position for any submarine. 8 HMS Turbulent is in the Strait of Gibraltar, heading for its new destination, Libya. This is one of three choke points that we need to get through. At the moment, the vulnerability is posed by the fact that submarines are designed to be underwater. We're relatively slow on the surface. The waterborne threats, whether it be from uh, Al-Qaeda or whether it be from other organisations, they may take this as an opportunity um, to have a go. Um, this is where that can happen. As the gateway to the Mediterranean, the strait is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. But the captain is not just concerned with the risk of collision. Even the most innocuous ships must be cleared. Aciona. Aciona, Aciona, this is uh, surface submarine, surface submarine on your starboard bow over. This is only the very beginning. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and we need to make sure that everything we tailor um, takes that into account. We need to provide uh, tomahawk capability, intelligence gathering capability for a period of over nine months. With the Strait of Gibraltar safely behind her, Turbulent now needs to cover the thousand miles between her and the coast of war-torn Libya as quickly as possible. Ops report the state of the Vex Mercy flat battle. Well done. Soon they will be going into theatre and they will need to be even more aware of the dangers of life on board a submarine. The reason we do damage control training is that even in a uh, well-maintained submarine such as this, emergencies do happen. I've been at sea where uh, we've had hydraulic bursts, even a flood. The bottom line is mechanical things do go wrong and fires happen. Emergency stations, emergency stations, fire, fire, fire. Drills like this are treated with the utmost seriousness. In the first phase, the crew attempts to extinguish the simulated fire. 
They know that just four years ago, men died in a real fire on their sister submarine, HMS Tyrus. The shared experience of this daily danger is something that unites all submariners. If we have a fun, we can't on, 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 on find the fire brigade. We have to be able to rely on each other to deal with any emergency that is put before us. That's right, OK, you're being beaten back now. Okay, being beaten back now, you've got to shut the door. OK. The crew has failed to extinguish the fire, so the second phase of the exercise kicks in. The designated fire team is now called in. First, they have to get into full fire protection gear. Each submariner knows he holds the lives of the others in his hands, so being drilled to perfection is the difference between life and death. The fire's up, the fire's up. The fire has been successfully extinguished, but they will repeat this exercise often in the months to come. They can't afford complacency. As they approach the coast of Libya, the men are aware of the worsening situation as Colonel Gaddafi defies international calls to stand down and intensifies his attacks on the rebels opposing him. With the growing awareness that they may well be called into action, Turbulence crew is experiencing its last days of normality. In the bomb shop, an English GCSE class is taking place for those hoping to improve their career prospects. Time management is crucial to passing this exam. Read through the paper, read through the question before you try and answer the questions. But then, even this last semblance of normal life is interrupted. Men, this is the captain, listen up. Just had the uh, heads up and a personal four signal in uh, that provides us with our tasking for the uh, next 48 to 72 hours. Primary tasking is uh, Tomahawk. We are to go to two hours notice to fire at uh, approximately 08.30 tomorrow morning as soon as we arrive in theatre. Well, I need to be there as 110% effort. Make sure we do what Turbs does best, which is deliver. That's it. What I want to be able to do is load the two block fours up to the three and four tube, but the two block threes that are in there be in a position that fours are out, out of the way, threes are in. In the wake of the captain's announcement, the temporary classroom returns to its primary purpose, the bomb shop. There's no panic, no rush, just a quiet methodical efficiency that is the product of constant drilling and practice. Soon they will be ready to fire the devastatingly accurate Tomahawk missiles, capable of destroying a building up to a thousand miles away. What do you have to miss, Kimber? Keeping a good eye out on the weapon. Ram, won't you? Ram, won't you? Ram, won't you? Ram it unlocked. Stand clear. Ram it, won't you? I know we can do Tomahawk. We can get it where it's supposed to be. Um, it's just everything else needs to support that. Um, I've got no reservations about what we're going to do. This is our job, as required by NATO and as required by the UK. So I've got no issue whatsoever um, in uh, launching Tomahawk um, if required to do so. That is the whole purpose of the submarine, is to, uh, to deliver violence to the enemy. Um, there's no point beating about the bush. This is a ship of war. It is designed to inflict damage on other people. Um, it's one of those things, it's kind of personal, isn't it? If you were, I'm sure if we ever did go to war with anybody, we'd, there'd be the soul searching, but that's done off watch in your bed or that's your own personal thing to do. Now, they are off the coast of Libya. Turbulence weapons are primed. And as the reality of the situation hits home, they get the Libyan capital Tripoli in their periscope sights.